Now, for so many days I am telling, the object and aim and object of our devotional services is the love and affection in the heart of Radhika to Krishna. The service of conjugal but inclination towards her as human jariya. This is aim and love. And for this, everywhere it has been told. Only the process is of the pure bhakti. Especially those who fulfill the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Rupa Goswami. I told him Bhakti Rasamit Sindhu, Anna Vilasita Sunya, Gyan Karma Anapriya, Anukulena Krishna Nusidanam Bhakti. Explain Gosan and Gubinda Sindhu, Sudha Goha. Activities. But is what he or she doing really pure bhakti? What is pure bhakti? What is its definition? What is, it, what is its character? How can we measure what we're doing against that exalted bhakti for which we aspire? To help us, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has given us a very wonderful, very astonishing definition in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is Paribhasha Shastra, or the Shastra of Definitions. He states, Anya vilashita shunyam jnana karma jnana vritam anukulyena krishnano shilanam bhakti ruttama Uttama bhakti or transcendental bhakti is the cultivation of all endeavors of the body, mind, words, and spiritual sentiments known, known as bhavs solely for the service or benefit of Sri Krishna. In this verse the word anu has been used. Anu means nirantar or continuous. In other words, our performance of bhakti must be like the continuous, unbroken stream of honey that flows from a jar. If you pour honey out of a jar, it comes out in a thick, continuous stream. So in other words, our practice of bhakti is not for five hours a day, not for two hours, not even for 23 hours, but continuous, uninterrupted, 24 hours a day without any break. Anu here also means anugatya. In other words, pure bhakti is only achieved when we are properly under the guidance of a pure Vaishnava. Anu Kuliena, here again we have an Anu. Here, the meaning is that what, what we do in service of Sri Krishna must be with a favorable spirit. This particular word was included by Sri Rupa Goswami 
to avoid the fault, faults of avyakti and ativyakti. Avyakti means underextension of a rule or definition, and ativyakti means overextension of a rule or definition. Our endeavors are not simply to please Krishna, but more, more specifically to benefit Krishna. When Krishna was fighting with Chanur and Musti in Mathura, these two great wrestlers were bent on killing Krishna. But because they had this fighting mood against Krishna, it gave them much pleasure. But what they were doing was that pure bhakti? Certainly not. Then on the other hand, Mother Yashoda, we find that sometimes she makes Krishna cry. Krishna will weep bitterly. She may even chastise him severely or bind him. But her, her mood of devotion to Krishna is the very highest form of bhakti. So for this reason, to keep Chanur and Mustik outside of the definition of pure bhakti and to bring in great Krishna's personal associates such as Srimati such as Srimati Radhika, such as Mother Yashoda and others. This particular word Anukul Yena has been used. So we find three Anus here. Anu in Anukul Yena, Krishna, uh, Krishnanu Shilanam, that second Anu has two meanings. So it is as if there are two Anus there, making three Anus. According to the construction, the rules for the construction of sutras, when something is mentioned three times, it adds great emphasis to it. Just as in the shlok, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. So here, the meaning is that for pure bhakti to be there, one must be under guidance. One, one's endeavors must be continuous. And one must have a favorable mood, to ple a favorable mood towards Sri Krishna. This is the very essence, or Mukya Lakshan of Uttama Bhakti. Then, Shidarupa Goswami, in the first two lines of this verse, explains what Uttama Bhakti is by showing what it is not, by giving the Tatashta Lakshan. Anya Vilashita Shunyam. There should not be any trace of self interest or desire for self gain. Shunyam means nil, zero, nothing. In other words, nothing should remain. No desire, even slight, should remain to fulfill our own desires. Jnana karma jnana Here jnana means knowledge and karma means action. In this world, no person can live without acting and without knowing something. So this is why Shri Rupa Goswami Pad does not say jnana karma di shunyam, but he uses the word anavritam. In other words, jnana and karma, knowledge and action should not cover bhakti. Adi means etc. So this refers to tapasya, yoga, false renunciation, new age philosophy, anything that can distract one from our goal any, anything that can distract one from our goal or objective of pure bhakti. When these conditions are properly met, then and only then can it be said that we are performing uttama bhakti or transcendental bhakti. Thus in Bhagavad in Ved Upanishad, everywhere it has been told. Bhakti is only process to please Krishna. Only. Shabai Kunsan Paro Dharma Jato Bhakti Radhukha Je Ahetu Kapta Vita Ja Bhakti. Same meaning. No difference. So, Bhakti prevails from its last fraction, Sadha to Mahabhav Modanakabhav. All are called Bhakti. 
but the fashion like Sardhan is Taruchi and then Asakti, Rati, Sneeman, Pane, Ragnara, they are not same, but they can be defined by the word Bhakti. But so much difference is in them. So last fraction of the Bhakti is begins from hearing in Sadhusha. And this high class of personality, they gave a seed of bhakti in the heart of the devotees. And that is to, the desire to serve Krishna. This is seed of bhakti, kripa. To desire to serve Krishna. This is main thing. And it gradually developed Sadhanistha, Ruchi, Asakti, Shne, Mantra, Raghavata, Bhav. So it begins from. Sadha is also of two kinds. Lokiki Sadha. Lokiki Sadha and Parmarthiki Sadha. Lokiki Sadha means to have honor for any bhakta. bhakta. Hmm. For superior. For superior. This is called Sardha, Loki. But transcendental Sardha is of another kind. Sardha Sabde Vishwas Kahe Trudhira Nishaya Krishna Bhakti Kahe Sarva Karam Krita. If he will serve Krishna, your whole life is destruction. You will be happy forever. So strong belief I had there. My life will be successful as if I am going to do bhakti. And certainly with me. So I have a strong belief like Haridas Thakur. He was beaten in 22 markets. Even his all blood and flesh and everything was out of but even he was chanting, Hare Krishna Hare. You know Prahlad Maharaj, yesterday, you saw, poison was given. It was given to elephants, snakes, fire. From mountains he was thrown out. In the midst of ocean he was thrown out. But nothing was there. Krishna always said. So, a strong faith in Bhakti Sutra. And in the words of superior Guru, Vaishnava, Krishna and Shastra, this is called Sattva. Again, Sattva is of two kinds. Shastra Avadharana Mai, Bhagavad Katha Mahabhutti Mai. Predicting Shastra, if you are giving honor and serving your father, mother, superior, but not serving Krishna, not chanting, remembering Krishna, then you will go to hell. And if Sarvadharman Pantyajamam Ekam Saranam Braja, Antam Sarvapata Pate Bhomukse Shani Mahasusha. And if you are neglecting all your household duty, Varnasam, Dharma and everything, but you are chanting, remembering and serving Radha Krishna and Guru, then you will be happy in here. Your life is successful. So this Madhyada Mai Bhakti. And Lob Maiva, oh, from beginning, he is so fortunate that from beginning he has he had hearing three past times of Krishna. And then a great thick Greek came that I should serve Krishna like son, like mother Jasudananda Baba, like friend, Bhujan friends, like Subhan Siddhananda. 
a life of his wife, most beloved. This grief. So surprised of so many kinds. I think that from beginning I have told him about the sweet pastimes of Krishna, about the service and mood of Subal, Sridhan, Nandvaba, Jasoda and Gopis. Highest is the love and affection of the Gopis. That is the aim and object of the devotees in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now we should begin from Sadha. And then, if anyhow, fortunately you have Sadha in your heart, Sadha has come. But if you are not associating with high class of devotees, no Harinam and Diksha initiation, then gradually lacking of association, your Sadha will fall. So don't make your heart danger. Then if you will put seed, it will grow. So give water and fresh air like a gardener does. Always we try to be in pure Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu So give the importance of association. Then you will develop your Krishna thing, otherwise no. So, here, Bhakti Sanatana Goswami has divided Bhakti in five categories. And thus, the Bhakti also are divided into five categories. Jnani Bhakti, Shuddha Bhakti, Premi Bhakti, Prem Par Bhakti, Primatma Bhakti. This five. You will see that in, the, in these five kinds of bhakti stages are birth. <coughs> All are liberated. At least <coughs> all kinds of aparat and all kinds of worldly desires are done. Anartha has been removed. So first it begins from Prahlad Maharaj. He is Jnani Bhakta. What is the meaning of Jnani Bhakta? There are two types of Jnani. One, uh, worldly Jnani and one transcendental Jnani. Krishna Tattva Jnani. And again, Tattva Gyan are also divided into two. Hmm? With Aswarja Gyan, Mahabhudja Gyan. Aswarja Gyan, Krishna is Supreme Lord. He has all power. He can create millions of uh, universes in a moment. And in, he can destroy again. He can very sweet, very attractive, very beautiful. So his supreme law. But only Vaikunt. Uh, you can go to Vaikunt only by this love and affection. You cannot go to pressure by this as for Jitya. That Krishna is himself God. And if you want to do bhajan uh, of Krishna, Radha Krishna, you go to Dwarka, not to Vrindavan. There is no arcana of Radha and Krishna. 
Malli of Narayan. You can do search and do worship of Radha and Krishna. Really, it is not. Uh, it includes only uh, Lakshmi Narayan, not Radha and Krishna. Bhav Vaishya, as our Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Goswami, that time. So, Jnani Bhakti here has to do some aspergic jnani. Aspergic jnani means? Oh, that Krishna is himself God. He is God of all, the Lord of all. Shrine Bhagavan. Then, this frame, Mali confirmed, saying, back on the And that Krishna is my son, he is my most beloved, he is my friend. Hmm? By this spontaneous love and affection, which the definition is look else, then you can attend as is or principally any of the two, three kinds of things. So Prahlad Maharaj, you saw, he has appellant and tattva gyan, that missing Bhagavan is himself Krishna. And he can save devotees. He, is very, he has so many appellants, very much all kinds of powers. So, in this valley we can pray him no service at all. What Prabhupada Maharaj did? Anna Vilasita Sundam or oh, it was right in him. Gyan Karma Atjana. It was also there. But not a Krishna Silanam, it was not there. Not any in the power or activities of his whole senses to serve Krishna. What he served? Nothing. He prayed Krishna, Nasim um, I want to take all the sufferings of the all being of the whole world and I want to suffer in this world forever and all living entities should be liberated. Give your birth. This is so much high class of love and affection, but it's still, oh, it cannot have bridge. No service at all. So, Amrish Maharaj is pure bhakta. Sanakshanandan Sanatan was in this category. Gyanis bhakta. Visham Pitama was also Gyanis bhakta. You know Visham Pitama? He was fighting against Pandava. side of Durjodhan. No war was there because Durjodhan was fighting on the power of Visham Pitama that he is in our side. Dronacharya is his side. If Visham Pitama has told that I will not fight, then no war. So Visham Pitama you should know a history in Mahabharata, it is written, that when fight was beginning and Maharaj Visham Pitama has promised to kill ten thousand Rathi, eh? why yes? I will kill. And he was doing. Arjun was very much very fortunate. But still, Pandavas are not were controlled by Kauravas. Then Dujadhan went to Grisham Pitama. Oh Pitama, 
We have very strong faith on you. You are fighting, but you are fighting only to show you are really, uh, your heart is uh, with Pandavas. You don't want that they should be defeated or they should be killed. Otherwise you have killed first day. Then Vishnu Pitama told you, you are wrong. I am fighting and fighting for you. Don't worry for me. Have belief for me. Tomorrow I will try to kill them. Today, after war, in the midnight, you should come with your wife. I will give them election that it, oh, you will be victorious in this battle. And then, positively you should come. But from, or even like here, or two days ago, heavy rain continues whole day, very windy, very cold, and so much uh, thunderbolts coming. So, Duryodhana told his wife, Oh, I know that you are ready, but Today we should correspond and postpone and we will go next day. And hither, here, Krishna called Draupadi, Sati, you will have to come with me to Visham Pitama in midnight. You should cover your head with your belt and come with me and then I will go to the camp of Visham Pitama. And he did so with umbrella and she was sent to Vishampitana. Krishna was waiting on, sitting on the chair here. Vishampitana was in, in trance of Krishna. In the meantime, Draupadi went there and he did pranam and with a bell on his mouth, hiding herself, his mouth. And she sat down. But anyhow, Vishnu Pitama again came from the trance. No, no wife of Duryodhan. Oh, oh, you have come. Akhanda so Bhagavati bhav. And you should be victorious. Your long life, anyone cannot kill him. And then drop this smile and took his harbel. Oh, Prabhupada, you? How you can? Who brought you? Oh, I know that the trick he has, pretty person has brought him. And then he began to smile. And then he went to Krishna and prayed to come and he came and he was praying so much in the Lord's feet. So, Vishan Pitama, though he was fighting uh, for um, Korava, but he was always in the side of Pandava. So he is Bhakta. But how, what kind of Bhakta? Then, he, had, he knows the appearances of Krishna. How Krishna, he can show Vishwarupa in his mouth. He can, in a second, he can destroy all these all armies. He knew. So, Visham Pitame is. Oh, Visham Pitame is thinking because he is Gyani Bhakta. Though I am, as Pranatma was given heavy paste poison, strong poison, he was given to ocean and thrown from the hills and mountains. But he was alive. So, poison cannot touch Krishna. How can touch my these uh, bar, arrows to Krishna? They cannot touch. So he used to get oh, arrows and fighting Krishna. So, even this Yani but not pure bhakti. Though Amrish Maharaj is not liberated, 
But from beginning this sadhan, he is getting his all senses in the service of Krishna. Like in, has been told in definition, Anna Vilasita Sunyam Gyan Karmat Janabritam Anukulin Krishna Nushilanam Bhakti Nuttama. He used to do pranam with his head. Mana Krishna Padaravindya. You know this is Lok Prabhu, Brajina, what you do? Madhamara. Who? You know? If you know, you can stand up and say. What is the meaning? It's called but now. Shurun Miritam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vedama. Ambarish Maharaj, he engaged all his senses in Krishna's service. So, um, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Sparanam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Bandaram, Dasyam, Sakhyam, Atmani Vedanam. The are the ninefold devotional service. <coughs> and uh, so, Ambarish Maharaj used his ears to hear the glories of Krishna. He used his tongue to glorify to do the kirtan of Lord Krishna and he used his mind to remember Krishna and his pastimes and he used his hands to uh, clean the temple of Krishna Karo Hare Mandir Maharajanadishi and he used to always offer obeisances to Lord Krishna he used to do the deity worship of Lord Krishna, Radha Krishna, and uh, uh, he was Sakyam Atmani Vedana. <coughs> he also very um, uh, very high level of devotional service to Krishna, Sakyam, and he offered everything he had to Krishna, the Atmani Vedana. And he did this in the Mathura Dham, Mathura Mandal, and uh, he was of um, High class sadhak, and uh, he was even more than uh, even more than uh, Prahlad Maharaj because Prahlad Maharaj, when he saw Lord Nushingadev, he never thought that uh, Nushingadev is thirsty, he has just killed a demon, and he needs his his he may be tired, he had to do a big fight, and his feet need to be massaged, so. Prahlad Maharaj being a Gyani Bhakta, he had, uh, uh, he couldn't serve the Lord, though <coughs> he loved the Lord. So, uh, however, Ambarish Maharaj, he was, uh, you know, higher than uh, Prahlad Maharaj, and he was fully serving the Lord in all the possible ways, and he is the perfect example of this uh, nine types of devotional services. Full yeah, Durvasa Muni was uh, <coughs> Durvasa Muni is uh, is a high class of a yogi, and he is incarnation of Lord Shiva. So he is uh, he wanted to exhibit to the entire world that the glory of Sri Ambarish Maharaj. So Ambarish Maharaj actually uh, was performing Ekadashi. And he was performing the Ekadashi without uh, eating anything, not even a grain. He would be not even sleeping. He would be completely then <coughs> devoid of water. Devoid of water. He observed Mircha Ekadashi, which was um, without, you know, and without even sleeping in the night. So no water, no grains, no fruits, nothing. And not even sleeping at all. So entire night remembering, day and night remembering the Lord. And the Ekadashi has to be broken at a particular time, that's called Paran. And uh, that time, <coughs> Durvasa Muni, he actually appeared with his many disciples. And he actually said that, I want to go to bathe in the Jamuna River. And I will be back. Um, and he left. So, Ambarish Maharaj, he waited upon uh, Durvasa Muni to come back 
with his disciples so that they could have some prasad together and break the fast. So first he wanted to serve this high class of a Brahman and um, then take prasad himself. He, he was not very willing to take prasad before Durvas came. But Durvas knowingly no, he Durvas, Durvasa, 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 he knowingly delayed to come uh, from Jamuna. And so he, he consulted his priest, what should I do? So he said, the priest said that if you have taken Mirja Lekadashi, then you can um, drink some water. And drinking water is considered breaking the fast and not breaking the fast. Not ordinary water. It was the charanam of the Lord. It was the charanam of the Lord. So it was uh, uh, offered to the, the, the food bath water of the Lord Krishna. It was to be drunk. And uh, so he took some drops, only a few drops of charanamrut and he broke his fast. And uh, Durvas Muni immediately came. And he came and he became very furious. And he took only one hair like this. And he hid on the ground and immediately came out a big Rakshasi like that. And she she came and she attacked um, she attacked Ambarish Maharaj. And as she was going to attack Ambarish Maharaj, Lord Narayan Sudarshan Chakra came and chopped up the head of this Rakshasi, this demoness. And he started chasing Durvasa. He started chasing Durvasa. And Durvasa, at, at once he ran to uh, Brahmaji. Brahma Lodha. Where Lord four headed Brahma is there. And Brahma said, I cannot help you. You should go away from here immediately. Because this Lushan Chakra is chasing you. It is beyond my powers. And uh, I cannot protect you. So then he went to Rudra Loka and Shiva Loka. The Lord Shiva was there and Lord Shiva said, I cannot protect you. You, I cannot help you at all. You should go to Narayan. And then he was, he was so powerful that he at once went to the Lord Narayan's loka. And there Lord Narayan was there and Lord Narayan also told him that my, my dear Dhruva, this Lushan Chakra is my weapon. But it is Aham Bhakta Paradhi that I am completely dependent on my devotees wish. Whatever my devotees, you know, you must, you have offended the devotee, so you must try to beg forgiveness from the same devotee. I cannot help you. So, <clears throat> essentially, the devotee who was offended, then he should be pacified. So immediately Durvas, he came, and behind him, the Sudarshan, Sudarshan Chakra was burning him. There was so much heat coming from Sudarshan that, uh, he couldn't tolerate it, though he was the highest class of yogi. So he immediately flew down, he came to where <coughs> Ambarish Maharaj was doing sadhana and bhajan, and he fell at his feet and immediately said, please forgive me, this Sudarshan Chakra is burning me. So immediately Ambarish Maharaj, in a very choice words, he offered prayers to this Sudarshan Chakra. said, oh my dear Sudarshan Chakra, you are a high class of a Vaishnava. You should immediately, uh, if you are happy with me, you should not chase this yogi who is a high class of a Brahman and worshipable for me. Please forgive me. When Ambarish Maharaj had offered this high class of prayers to the Sudarshan, who is uh, the weapon of Narayan, the Sudarshan Chakra left uh, um, Durvasa and, and disappeared. So, <clears throat> This was only done by Durvasa to glorify the Ambarish Maharaj that if someone offends a high class of a Vaishnava, then one must immediately try to beg forgiveness from that Vaishnava. Unless that Vaishnava forgives, then you will you, not be liberated from uh, the consequences of the Vaishnava Prat. If you fall on the ground, if you slip at the ground, the same ground you have to take and you have to get up. If I slip from this place, I cannot go to that place and get up. You should immediately try to pacify the same Vaishnava. So this is the glories of uh, Ambarish Mahatma, the, the best Sahara. Hare. Oh, runs faster than Chakra? 
why he was arrested? He moved the whole world, Brahma Lok, Vishnu Lok, Rudra Lok. But why Chakra was not burning? Because really he wanted to glorify Ambarish Maharaj from the core of his heart. So he was not burning. Second thing, Maharaj Ambarish was not liberated. Prahlad is, Maharaj is so superior that Prahlad Ambarish Maharaj he is a sadhak, but he still his bhakti is so pure. Why? Maharaj and Bharis, like Pranath Maharaj, I don't know whether he came to Vrindavan or not. And Ambarish Maharaj, he has one of his seat in Vrindavan, Mathura, on the bank of Jamuna. And he used to do oh, Parajmanda Parikrama. He used to go to Nandana Varsana, Rasasthari, Bhandir, Bansi Vatani, Giraj Govardhan. So he is more superior than even liberated. So he is pure bhakta. Why pure bhakta? No karma, no gyan. They are controlled. And also, no Anna Vilashita, nothing. But still, his bhakti wants something more. Only this is not a high class of service to Krishna, Kandusha. So, we will have to come to oh, Prairi Bhakta. Who is it that? Who is uh, Hanma, how he is glorious. Madhama Raj will explain something. In brief. <laughs> Not two hours. <laughs> I am telling so many life history of so many devotees. Why? That you should choose according to your heart. To whom you want to follow. And really, when I will stop uh, this prasanga, prasanga, then you should choose that what you like, what you want to like to follow whom you should decide. So, Srila Guru ordered me to discuss about Prani Bhakta. At first, we have to know who is Prani Bhakta, who has prayed in his soul, they are Prani Bhakta. And sharpened by his own senses. All senses, all organs. Without any broad bread, like honey. So then you have to know how to spread. You have to surrender yourself. The Lotus Sutra of Sarudra Sahipad is defined in his scripture Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, Samagma Sinto Santo, Mamata Di Sayangita, Bhava Saiva Sangatma Buddhai Vimani Gardate. When your heart is completely smooth, why due to mamata, possessiveness? This Lord is mine. I have to serve Him. I have to please Him. When this minus will come too much, then the bhav, the rope will transfer into plane. When the bhav will condense too much, and this idea is there, then it transfer into plane. So if this idea was in Hanumanji, of Lord Ram. He always ending the service of Lord Ram. He never married. Why? If he married then he is 
And first one will go for war, for his wife, for his kids, this and that. So he never married. He never married. And always he engaged himself in service of Ram. 24 hours. 24 hours without any break. If we give some example, then you can understand what kind of service he is rendering. When Lord Ram, though Bhagavan can do anything in a moment, but Lord Ram in coming this world, to best his master the whole world. So he is performing human being pastimes. So his eternal potency, Lord Sita, was stolen by kidnapped by demon Lavan. So being human being human being pastimes of her performing human being pastimes, Lord Ram could understand where is my wife? Why is my potency Sita Devi? Why? Due to influence of Jomaya Devi. So then he made friendship, made friendship with Sukrim. Then Sukrim sent his armies here and there. So Hanuman went to search Sita Devi. He never seen Sita Devi. So Lord Ram gave one ring. Oh, he has ring, then he can see this is the symptom of Sita Devi. He went to the kingdom of Jaman Ravan. And he found Sita Devi and told, Oh mother, you can climb on my back, I shall flew from here to Lord Ram. Well, no, not possible. Without my visa, somebody touch me. But I could not touch any other person. Only when your Prabhu will come, then I shall go with him only, not other person. So Lord, Hanuman became very angry. Why? Even Ravan kidnapped my mother. Okay, I shall just for the whole Lanka. At first, Ravan sent his sons to fight against Hanumanji. They did so, they failed. Then Ravan sent to Meghnath. And Meghnath by Brahmastra bind Hanumanji. Hanuman had own benediction. He can be bind by Brahmastra, but can lead up there by himself without any help. So then they thought, oh, we shall put fire in Hanuman tail because the tail is very near and dear. <laughs> they put fire. Hanuman ran all over Lanka and tested the whole Lanka because demon Ravan kidnapped his mother Sita Devi. Like Vindavan Dasthaku told, Ato pari hare jai pati ninda kare, tare rathi marota sriyari kare. Here in the glory of Sima Nittananda Prabhu, if someone still criticizes Nittananda Prabhu, I shall keep on his, on his head. In the same way, Hanuman did this. This is their extreme Vaisnava, this is Vaisnava Then when Sita Devi came back from Lanka with Ramon, Lord Ram, one day Sita Devi was putting Warmilan on, on her head. Hanuman came, Mother, what are you doing? Sita Devi told, My dear son, I am putting Sindur on my head. Why so? Your father will long life. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Then Sita Devi, after dressing herself, went to royal assembly. As soon as Sita Devi got out from her dressing room, Hanuman entered in that room and took the all Sindur mixed with oil and smeared his whole body top to bottom and became completely red. <laughs> I went to assembly. Seeing this, Sita Devi covered her face, began to smile. She understood. And Lord Ram told Hanuman, What you did? <laughs> then he told, If my mother put little Sindhu here, then you long life. So I put all, all Sindhu will put my whole body, then you long, long, long life. So still you can see Hanuman every year with the red color. This service, how much love he has for this Prabhu. When Lord Ram came back from Lanka in conquering uh, Ravan, then he was donating some gold, some ornaments to everyone. At last, Lord Ram thought, what shall I give to Hanuman? Then he looked towards Sita Devi. Sita Devi has one very, very valuable, expensive necklace. So it is very rare that kind of necklace. So she took it off and handed over to Lord Ram. 
the Lord Ram came to Hanuman. And on his neck, Hanuman took off and taking one after another jewel and crushing by his teeth. Everybody was surprised. Oh, Lord Ram and Sita were mercifully gave so expensive necklace and he crushing one after another jewel. What is the cause? Then Lord Ram told Hanuman, What are you doing? Nonsense thing. No Prabhu, I am watching if my Prabhu's name is there or not. So I crash one, could not find your name. I crash second one, could not, so I am crashing and throwing. So have Ramnam your heart for a yes. Then he put his nail and tear his breast and so chest and so the whole world in every pore of his body, Ram, 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 Ram coming out. Then everyone then understood how Hanuman is glorified, how he is near and dear to Lord Ram. By this way, he is serving Lord Ram. So one day, Sita Devi, Lakshman, Bhara, Satyugna, they held a meeting. Oh, we want to render some services. Always this monkey taking all chances. So from tomorrow, we shall divide our all services. We should not give any chance to this monkey one. Okay. So Sita will serve night time and other three brothers, they will serve day time. They did, they did his resolution. Hanuman came, they told, we have no service for you. Hanuman begged, oh, give me any menial service. Otherwise, how I can survive my life? Then they told, no, 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 no service left over. You serve enough. And okay, then I can take only one service. Then the what service? When Lord Ramchandran yearn, then I shall click. Then the okay, because they know, whole world know, whole world never yearn. Because due to tiredness or laziness. So it's not impossible in Bhagavan. They are okay. And they not allow him to be in the royal palace. When one went out of the royal palace, sitting on the tree, he is clicking. Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Siya Ram. His mind chanting and clicking. And Lord Ramchandra, yearning after yearning non-stop. Like we have heard from Sundar Pal Prabhu in the definition of Onnabhilasa Sunnam. The honey pouring from jar without any bread. If you pour water and bread, the honey no bread. In the same way, Hanuman is doing Jai Ram, Jai Ram and clicking. So they could not render any service. Then the, this must mischief done by that monkey one. <laughs> then they came to Hanuman, oh Hanuman, what are you doing? We could not serve anything, not eating, nothing, only yawning, yawning. Hanuman told, what can I do? Only you left over this menial service for me. So I have nothing to do anymore of this thing. So what, how I can know? Where will you eat here? Because I am out of palace, so I don't want to miss my chance, so I am always doing this. <laughs> so they came to Ram, then they again compromised. Lord Ram told, let him serve as, soon, as well as he was serving. Then they did so, and Ram Chandra, Lord Ram Chandra came in, in normal position. Lord Ram Chandra showed this, how Hanuman is near and dear to him. Because Bhagavan told, Aham Bhakta Paradhi, no, I am controlled completely by my devotee. So Lord Ramchandra, how controlled by his devotee, he sought to Hanuman. You know, Hanuman is very bhakta. And when Lord Ram invaded Lanka, Ravan had very big castle. Lord Ravan, and Lord Ram has nothing. Hanumanji, by his tail, made a very big castle. Moreover, he became guard there. None can any enemy cannot enter in this castle. By this way, his heart Lord Ram. Who is Hanuman? Sometimes he carried Lord Ram and Lakshman on his shoulder. And during Ramayan battle, and Meghna tightened Lord Ram and Lakshman by straight rope. And there is some time. In this period, if no snake will not be taken off, then anyone can die. Everyone is thinking, what to do, what to do? Immediately, 
found one few to welcome the planet and told Garurji, he had to come and to serve Lord Ram. Only everyone thinks where is Hanuman? They are searching. None can find. After some time, Hanuman came down along with Garurji. As soon as snake get the smell of Guru, they ran away. Mm. And Ramchandra and Lakshman, they came in normal position. They are Bhagavan, but they are performing human being first time. Another time, Meghna shoot Lakshman by herself, that none can save Lakshman. Lord Ram is weeping so bitterly. How I can show my face to Ajatavasi? Show my mother, Kausar Lasunitra Kaikei. They will tell, you give up Lakshman? Then Hanumanji went to, he consulted with Vivisan. Vivisan the only one person in Lanka by the Ayurvedic doctor Susan. If he helps, and before sunrise, then it is possible. Hanuman went to Susan by the and he told Ali Susan, well, yes, what to do? Let us go, help. Then he took up, up to his house and came to Lord Ram. So, what a dream? Then he told the whole story. But he was in confusion, he didn't know what to do. Vivisan make him understand, Hanuman did the right thing. You are Ayurvedic doctor, you should not take any side. He is my enemy, he is my friend, he is my foe, not like this. Then he told me, yes, you have to go to Himalaya <coughs> and have to bring some horse. By that, he can alive, otherwise not possible. And one condition, have to bring, have to come back before sunrise. If sun will rise, then none can make him life anymore. And one, okay. And one flew from there and he went to Himalaya. In the middle, there is one demon want to make him stop. Then he went to Himalaya. The, the followers of Ravan, they make all hearts lightning. And one could not understand. He uprooted that Parva, Dandamadan, and came back. By that they make some paste and smear the Lakshman, Lakshman body and drink some, drank him some medicine, Sanjivani body, then he came in life. Here also Hanuman is serving Ram and Lakshman. By this way, always is serving. And when Lord Ram invaded Lanka, the main part was of main role was Hanuman to make the bridge. In so many ways from beginning of his life, he served Lord Ram. Even when Lord Ram disappeared from this world, he told Hanuman, he have to be in this world, have to serve, have to preach my mission. Though he was so unhappy, but he to fulfill his master's desire. He has so much love for his master, he is my own. So he could not deny that. So he, being in this world, still is serving Lord Ram. Whenever Harikatha will be gone, he must be there in any form. Though we could not understand, he not in come in monkey form, any other form will come and must listen Harikatha. So we pray Hanumanji, he bestowed his mercy and then we can advance in Krishna consciousness and we want to serve his master who are not in own deference mood. What is his Madhurita mood? And Pratbhasi is serving. We want to serve the Guru that is serving, in the same mood we want to serve, so you want this uh, beautiful Hanumanji that you must give his uh, mercy that we can serve divine couple like Guru that is serving. Hare Krishna. Bansha Kanda Karukha Kepada Kinyu Kanyu now, Ram is ready. You have heard about Ram. He was Premi Bhakta. Continuous flow like honey. Always serving day and night. With his each by coming and go, he was serving. In dream too, he used to serve. But can he embrace Ram or not? He can, can he give any remnant to Krishna? Can he use, abuse Krishna? Never. So, he wants to embrace Ram. He wants to kiss Ram. 
given to give some very tasteful remnants, but he cannot give. Next day, we will tell Premartu Bhakta more than him. Premper Bhakta, Pandavan, more superior than him. Serving Krishna in so many ways, more than Hanuman, Hanuman cannot. Embracing even Krishna is serving Pandavan. So tomorrow we will do the time. Hmm? Only two days are left. We will try to finish. Otherwise, it will take so many days. At least ten days to explain, but I will explain it in two days. Take the delivery and one. Uh, what name? Uh, you should sing with your wife. Do you want? You are ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? He and his wife. Photographer. Photographer. Oh, then. Where are two sisters? Two sisters. Oh. Then Trishara. Ten years ago.